Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Level 1 Podcast for what is Tuesday, the 23rd of January, 2024. What I would like to do today is take an opportunity to have a day where we kind of sit back and relax and just kind of reassess where we are with everything that's going on. Because right now there's a heck of a lot going on Um on all of my channels. You know, three different channels on YouTube, that's a lot to juggle to begin with. But the fact that each individual channel has stuff kind of going on right now that's important, um, I think today's a good day to, to re-juggle and reassess all of that and figure out where we are. Because I need multiple levels of feedback for different channels and things going on. Um, I want to let you know, like, matter-of-factly how things are going right now. Um... <clears throat> And also, I have a cat on my lap who's trying to tickle me with his tail. And it's very distracting, to say the least. Right, Jasper? Right, Jasper Kitty? He would not let me sleep this morning. So basically, I woke up at like 6 in the morning because I had to use the bathroom. And when I got back in bed, he literally woke up and would not let me sleep. He kept pawing me, kneading the bed around me, moving the blanket, get, hitting me with his wet nose over and over and over so I lost like consistent sleep I mean I did fall back asleep but it was like I fall back asleep then he wake me up then I fall back asleep then he wake me up again like oh Jasper (laughs) this is what happens when you have a cat and sometimes the cat just does not want to rest when he's supposed to and there he goes anyway welcome to the show everyone um wow there's a lot going on right you know, particularly we're in the home stretch till the first major new releases of the year, which are definitely going to be exciting games that I, I cannot wait for. As you know, two completely different styles of games with an RPG and a fighting game. Um, so that's great. You know, we've got new content in full swing on my throwback channel. Um, and here on DSP Gaming, we've got the adjourning of Street Fighter VI and the continuation of things like Baldur's Gate 3 and trying out more PAL World all kinds of stuff. And then over on DSP React, we've got a situation where I basically am being forced to redo the way the channel works, and I'm nervous. I am. Because I don't know if I'm going to have buy-in from the people over there. I would hope I do, but basically I'm looking for feedback, and I haven't gotten much. All right? So we're going to talk about all of this on today's podcast, and uh, hopefully get an assessment of where we are, you know, maybe by the end of the show. Of course, also coming up, we've got the big Super Bowl event that's going to happen on Sunday, uh, excuse me, Saturday, February 10th. So a little bit over two weeks away. And my wife and I are currently in the planning stages um, of figuring out, you know, the food she's going to make for that and stuff like that. Um, but we have to figure out what you want me to do during that event. And we've already begun discussions. It seems like ultimately it is going to be gameplay. But the question is, what gameplay? Is it going to be offline playthroughs continuing the games that I'm already playing at the time such as Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth Tekken 8 
and uh, Baldur's Gate? Or will it be online competitive play, which kind of is in spirit with what I would think the Super Bowl event would be, you know, competitive events, such as Tekken 8 online play, uh, maybe some Modern Warfare random online session, maybe some Street Fighter 6, right? Stuff like that. Um, or do you really want to see me play NFL games? Because we could try to figure that out. But the thing is, I played Tecmo Bowl last year. It wasn't great. It only lasted about 30 minutes of the marathon. Uh, there really are no other games available on anything without, without spending significant amounts of money. And I don't really see the point of dropping a bunch of money to play the game for like 45 minutes, right? So, I don't know. We're thinking about this right now. And this, this discussion will continue. Um, but as of today, I feel like... <clears throat> I feel like we have so much going on that maybe we'll, we'll save that discussion for another day. Maybe tomorrow. Okay? Um... There you go. All right, so let's talk. Let's let's just basically start with what happened yesterday on my streams so everyone's aware, and we'll tackle each thing kind of in line with, as it's going on, all right? So first of all, yesterday, what happened on the podcast was I finally kind of explained to all of you what's going on now with DSP React due to this YouTube membership exploit, all right? Once again, in a nutshell, people are using VPNs to look like they live somewhere else where they don't, and they're taking advantage of a loophole or exploit in regional pricing to mass buy things on YouTube, including super chats and memberships, for pennies on the dollar. Like you could buy hundreds of memberships for less than a dollar. All right. This essentially breaks YouTube's system. For a channel like this, it's not that big of a deal because the memberships basically just give you emotes. Um, the memberships are not tied to any particular privilege or event, but. In the case of over on DSP Reacts, that very much is the case because I have a weekly show called DSP versus the Internet that relies on members to submit clips. If overnight we go from 100 members to 450, the show cannot operate. It's also not fair to those who are real paying members, paying the full price to support the channel, that now their privileges are being given to someone who has gifted a membership that's worth like literally one thousandth of a cent. Okay? Not fair at all. So... We talked about this yesterday, and essentially what we came to the conclusion about is that the memberships on DSP Reacts need to be redesigned, all right? So instead of having a standard super and ultra tier, we're now going to be doing a entry, submissions, and ultra tier. The ultra tiers are not going to change at all. They're not affected, but the other two tiers are going to go away, and I'm going to have two new tiers, one of which is going to be incredibly cheap, and all you get is access to the emotes, and that's it. And then that second tier is going to be the one where not only can you submit clips for the show every week, but also you can ask questions for Q&A. So it adds on some features that previously people did not have. The bummer is I have to increase the price of the tier because the way YouTube works is that gifted memberships will always gift up to a $5 value. So unless I make that submissions tier more expensive than $5 USD, it's going to get gifted out and the problem will just continue. Okay? So, talked about all this yesterday. We kind of brainstormed on how to make it work. We didn't 100% figure out how to make it work for the Q&A because basically doing this change would let the channel continue to operate and have DSP versus the internet every week. The problem is how do you do the Q&A? Because now, for example, there's about 100 people who submit clips every week, all right? In reality, there's 100 eligible people, and I would say probably 30 to 50 people submit clips every week to be realistic, okay? Um... Now with this new feature, what if overnight 50 people submit questions? Well, if I'm answering 50 questions, there's no time for the clips. So I'm thinking the solution could be a random select process by which everyone, just like right now, submits their questions into a thread, all right? And then by random select, I just pick like five to 10 questions a week and answer them live, and there, that's how we do it, just like we do with the clips. So that's what I'm thinking anyway, and that's what we talked about yesterday and kind of came to the conclusion about. So we left it at that, and I said, tonight I will post, well, this was yesterday, but I said, tonight I'll post up a video on DSP Reacts. I'll try to field responses and go from there, okay? Cool. Uh, first stream yesterday was supposed to be the conclusion of Resident Evil Zero Remastered. Now, it was, just not the way that I think I or other people had expected. <clears throat> Basically, for the second time this run, and for the third time overall playing this game over the course of eight years, I softlocked myself again. I didn't have enough ammo or healing items to beat the leech boss. And every time I went into the room, 
the boss would immediately grab me, and now I can't win because I, I can't get hit. I can only get hit twice, and then the fight is over. There wasn't enough space to shoot the thing. You know, I went back, and I actually watched my playthrough of this from 2016. <clears throat> and in that run, I had three-plus healing items, an insane amount of grenade ammo. So because I had all of that, I was in a much better position to fight the guy, and I could just basically have both characters unload ammo into him. I don't, I don't even have half as much ammo this run as I did back then. So, basically, the game's unbeatable. And I tried for, like, 30 minutes, and I was just so... I was like, what am I doing this for? I'm 41 years old, all right? No one cares if I beat this game, because I already have. It's not even like this is a game I haven't beaten yet. I already beat this eight years ago on the same difficulty. We know what it ends. It's a terrible ending, by the way. <laughs> the game itself is the worst numbered Resident Evil. It really is. I feel like it's, it's absolutely awful. Um... And it's just a test of patience rather than a test of skill or or anything scary. It's just a fucking annoying game. So after getting that far, I said, fuck this. I want to do something else. And with a quick brainstorming session, I said, you know what? Let's do the Tekken 8 demo. Because my wife and I played it together about a week and a half ago. She was playing and I was, you know, helping her with it. And it was really fun. With Tekken 8 coming out Friday, I thought this would be a good preview of it. So on the fly, I downloaded the Tekken 8 demo to my PS5. And we did multiple modes. First, we just went into player versus CPU, and I went right to ultra-hard difficulty, the hardest level there is. And with Paul Phoenix, the character who I'm actually quite good with, that's the one I've played with over the years, I fought against all four characters. Paul, uh, Nina Williams, Kazuya Mishima, and Jin Kazama. So, went in there, fought them all, beat them all. I said, alright, let's check out arcade mode. So arcade mode is a simulated mode where you're basically like an arcade goer and you meet other people in an arcade and you hang out, you become friendly, you challenge everyone in the arcade, you play them all attacking, you level your character up, and then you get a, a simulated tournament, you fight in the tournament, and then basically it says, oh, what this is going to be is almost like a world tour mode <clears throat> where you're going to be able to go to different arcades and challenge people of different skill levels. You'll be able to level up your avatar and put clothing on them. You'll be able to level up the characters in the game and, and you know, customize them. So it's a fun mode in that regard, and especially for someone who maybe is trying to learn more than one character. You could switch characters in between matches, so maybe, you know, you want to play a character you know and a character you don't know, and then try to learn slowly. It's kind of a cool way to do that. Um, so it was fun. It was really fun. Um, and then after that, which I didn't even know because I didn't do this when my wife had played, it unlocked another mode called Ghost Mode. Now what Ghost Mode does is it unlocks AIs as co created by the game devs, but what this eventually will do is create an AI of yourself based on your gameplay mechanics, the things you do, and it's going to upload that online so other people can fight your AI and you can fight against your AI as well, and eventually what's going to happen is AIs are going to be created that you can download off the internet in the full version and challenge. So it's actually a neat mode, and I think I fought something like 15 different AIs that were only in the demo. They weren't from online, they were just in the demo. Um, and so we fought a wide variety of characters. It was actually quite neat, because we got to see a good variety of characters from the game. Probably about half the cast, I would argue, um, in this demo. And they were fun, and they were challenging, because these AIs do combos. Like, they would hit you once, counter hit, and then all of a sudden, juggle, juggle, now you're on the ground, juggle on the ground, juggle on the ground. It's like, whoa, they hit you once, they take like half your health bar, and that's realistic. That's what real Tekken's like. So it was quite challenging, but I had fun, beat all them. So I had a good time with that. And then after that, we even had a little bit of extra time. So we ended up doing a little bit of a Q&A, just like a 30-minute Q&A session to end the stream. So I basically turned that first stream, which was going to be a disaster, into something great because of my on-the-fly thinking. And because you guys were very receptive to the change, it went really well. I want to say thank you to anyone who was there because the funny part is, previously, if I ever quit a game, people would give me shit. In the case of Resident Evil Zero, I'm not even kidding you, people supported my decision. Like, if you read the comments, people were commenting on the video, they were like, yeah, he did the right thing. Like, this game is bad, and he, he got himself in a situation, there's no way he was gonna win this unless he, he got lucky. It was gonna take him hours to do this, and it's just not worth it. He's already beaten it. I'm glad he didn't keep suffering. And it's funny, because again, I'm 41 years old. I'm in a position now where, basically, I'm older, and I got limited time on this earth, and I kind of realize that now. I realize I'm not a youngster anymore, right? And I'm in demand to do so many things at once. At any moment, everyone's like, hey, play this game, play that game, do this on stream, do that on stream, right? Everyone wants to see something. <clears throat> at any moment, if I stop doing one thing, I can easily do other things people want and will enjoy. 
So it's not like I'm stuck only doing one thing and then if I change my mind or something goes wrong, oh no, disaster, now we have nothing to do. That's, it's kind of the polar opposite of that, right? And I'm happy about that. I don't want to put myself into positions where I'm just not having fun and force myself to keep going because then no one enjoys it. I don't enjoy it. You don't enjoy it. What's the point? You know, you got to understand that there is an audience out there that just loves to torture me. I don't give a fuck about them and they don't support me. So I don't give a shit about what they say, right? There was no one who, if I toughed through the end of Resident Evil Zero, was going to come to stream and be so grateful and support the stream because I beat it. It was going to be the contrary, right? So who gives a fuck about that? So anyway, it was great. I'm glad that I did that. The on-the-fly changes were good. And uh, we had a good time yesterday. The stream overall went really, really well, all right? So then the late stream last night was my conclusion stream of Street Fighter VI. When I say conclusion, I don't mean I'm never playing it again. I mean I'm not going to consistently be playing it as the major fighting game on this channel any further. I've done that for seven months. I've hit the wall in the game where essentially you can't get better at this game unless, number one, I were to switch to PC and do things with the PC to reduce input lag so I can react better to things like throws, drive impacts, and blocking high-low none of which I can react to anymore at the master level. It doesn't work. And number two, uh, if I played way more and started playing really hardcore, like playing it all the time, and I don't, I'm not going to do either of those things, all right? It's not that worth that much of an investment for Street Fighter Six for me. I basically hit the wall after seven months. I'm never going to get any better. I'm at around 1,500 points, master points with Blanca. Sometimes I go above, then I dip, then I go above, then I dip, and I always stay there. It's never going to change. So at this point, it's just kind of like, how many times do you want to spin your wheels without moving, right? So anyway, the final stream was about 50-50 for me. There were some matches I really enjoyed, and things went well, and I did pull off some good combos and tactics, and other matches were absolutely atrociously bad with half my inputs being dropped, can't block. Like, I don't want to play this anymore. I said it multiple times. She was like, I'm so glad I'm not playing this anymore. Because when you get to that point where everyone plays exactly the same, the same pattern play, and it's all abusable, and you can't do anything about it because online doesn't react fast enough, and you're just like, I don't want to do it anymore. It's just not fun. You've, it's lost that spark of fun that it had when it was more everyone learning, okay? <clears throat> so there you go. Um, so yeah, that's the deal. And Street Fighter Six ended last night. Um, overall, here's what I want to say about Street Fighter Six. I want to give like a final thoughts on the game here, okay? Street Fighter VI is the best modern fighting game I've played. It, it outshines every other game that I've played in the last 10 years, really. Uh, it's that good of a game. Capcom put a ton of time and effort into making this what people wanted of all types, rather than just one small group or not listening at all and doing whatever they wanted. They, they literally listened to all the feedback from Street Fighter V and came out with a really great product. Really great graphics, a diverse and differentiated play styles of, of a launch cast, um, tons of gameplay modes, both for people who are competitive and non-competitive, offline and online. And yes, the best netcode of any fighting game I've ever played. Okay? That's amazing. It's not perfect, you know. Like I said, what's happened to me is I, I hit master level with all the characters I'm using, and it hit the wall, because now you realize, even with netcode this good, it's just still not good enough for a game where they have an upper echelon of players and, and classes where all they have to do is play a pattern, and you can't beat it without reacting to it, but you can't react to it perfectly online with the netcode as it is. Still the best netcode out there, still not good enough for competitive play, but still the best you're going to get in any fighting game, right? So it's kind of like, well, what's the lesser of two evils? The lesser of two evils is playing this and realizing you cannot really play it at a high level unless you go crazy. Buy a high-end PC, tweak the fuck out of the inputs to have no input delay and be able to then play it at a high level like most people in Master have. Most people in Master are on PC doing that. So, unless you're going to be that crazy serious, it's not a big deal, right? So for me, I loved it. I enjoyed the seven months and I want to say thank you to everyone who was along for that crazy ride. Um... It was super fun trying out different characters, having these fun nights. You know, we had community nights come back for the first time of any game in ages, right? Years and years since I did a community night, and we did that with Street Fighter Six, and that was really fun. Um, you know, getting the characters to master level and then different kinds of characters rather than just one or two. It was four characters, and we almost got Zangief to there as well. Um, and, and thanks to everyone who, of course, supported it. I wouldn't have been able to play Street Fighter VI as much as I did if it wasn't for you guys and your ongoing support. Just being honest, you know. Um, fighting games are not my forte anymore. 
fighting games are not something that necessarily people come to this channel to see because I stopped playing them consistently for so very long. Street Fighter V actually like broke my interest in fighting games where I just didn't want to play them anymore because the game was so bad. I was like, wow, this used to be the industry leader and they literally made the worst fighting game I've ever seen and I can't believe that people are playing and supporting it because it's trash and I just didn't care anymore, right? This game reinvigorated me to play fighting games again. And now I'm heading into Tekken 8 with a positive, open-minded attitude, willing to learn, willing to, to adapt and, and, and improve, and caring about it, which I didn't before. My attitude before was, eh, play it for a week. Play through the story, fuck around online, mess around, then start to lose, and just stop playing. And that's really not the mentality I have anymore. I want to actually learn this game and get better at it and, you know, wide cast the characters and everything. I think it's going to be super fun. Uh, <clears throat> so I certainly hope you guys will join me for that. But for those who are here along for the ride in the journey of Street Fighter VI, thank you. You made this possible. You know, all this fighting game stuff that I may do now in the future is literally because people supported my journey through Street Fighter VI. And I really, 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 really appreciate that. Thank you so very much to everybody, okay? All right, so Street Fighter VI, stick a fork in it. It's done. Now, will I go back to the game? Yes, I can guarantee you I will. But it's not going to be any timely manner. Like, what I find hilarious is that Tekken 8 comes out on Friday. So what does Capcom do? They had just announced two days ago, oh, Ed is coming out, the next DLC character in February. Your major competitor has a brand new game with 32 characters. That's coming out this week. People will be playing the living shit out of that game for months. Nobody cares about Ed. Literally no one. Besides the most hardcore of fucking players who think they need to be have the competitive edge in Street Fighter 6. Nobody else gives two fucks about Ed releasing in Street Fighter 6. I certainly don't, right? So, <clears throat> am I going back to Street Fighter 6 to play with Ed? Fuck no. Fuck no, I'm not. No, I'm going to be playing Tekken. <laughs> I don't care about that, right? Uh, now, will I eventually play Street Fighter 6 again and play Ed? Yes. And when Akuma comes out later this year, yes, I'll check that out. And when there's a Season 2 update, when they tweak all the characters and rebalance the game, yes, I'll check that out too. But there is no way I'm going back to Street Fighter 6 in February. They're out of their fucking minds. That's just pathetically bad timing. And it's almost like, hey guys, uh, so we want to stay pertinent. Hey, we're going to have a DLC character. Like, no one cares. No one cares, man. <laughs> Anyway, uh, and one final thing, because people have brought that up. They said, well, you didn't beat story mode. I mean, you're right. For what I'm going to understand, it was going to be a nightmare to beat. The final chapter of story mode that I was in, the tournament, is so difficult that you literally have to grind for hours on end to artificially level up your character to beat it, which is stupid because you never have to do that in story mode until that point. And even my biggest fans of the Street Fighter gameplay were messaging me being like, just so you know, this is going to be terrible. It's not going to be fun to watch. You're going to rage. And everyone's going to be like, wow, this sucks. If you haven't noticed, no one ever asked me to go back to it. No one. There's, I think there's one person who was hoping I would. That's it. Like, no one really cared. It kind of sucks that they did that and they kind of ruined the end of the story mode. I think that it would have been better if it was just like a fight or something instead of a tournament of insanely overleveled characters. That didn't make sense that they did it that way. Um, so anyway, am I ever going to be going back? to that i don't know only if you guys want and i've been waiting and there's been absolutely no demand for it so that's why i didn't really care about it all right all right so there you have it goodbye street fighter 6 thanks for watching everyone of course keep in mind the literal hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of hours that i put into that game are all live on this channel inappropriate playlists per month and and it's easy to find character matches and stuff <clears throat> if you're ever interested you could go back and watch enjoy all the rage right at the, at the online play. So, all right. So that was yesterday. And then to end my day yesterday, I made a video for DSP React explaining the situation that's going on in the channel and the fact that I'm going to have to redo the memberships and all of that. And basically the reason I posted up the video is because I said to everyone, hey, I need feedback. I need to know exactly uh, what you think. Or if you're a current member of DSP Reacts, would you be willing, once I cancel the existing membership tiers, to join again <clears throat> as the middle tier to keep the channel running you know is it worth it for you to pay two extra dollars to have q a questions or maybe you just like the channel enough that you want to keep it going that you would do that it sucks that i i really can't add any more value but i have to increase the price 
to keep the channel alive and not have it be ruined by these illicit uh, and not illicit um uh, illegitimate memberships, right? So yeah, uh, so here's the thing. I post the video up and I went to sleep basically. And this morning I woke up and it's got like 7 800 views. So people watched it. You know, that channel uh, in general the videos only get around 300 views. So to get 7 800 views it means people watched it. And I go and I check and I only got maybe a couple comments that were that were actually like real feedback. You know, all the idiotic trolls comment and none of their show, comments show up because they're idiots. So they just literally like to waste their life. They're that stupid. I mean, just think about that. I have three channels. All of them are set up that YouTube auto sorts comments. So the moment that you post up something that's a swear or something, you know, fucked up, it blocks it. So your comments are not going to ever show up on the video. Yet there's people who literally waste hours of their life posting up all these comments. They're that stupid. I mean, I don't know how much more brain dead you could prove yourself to be. And I wish that I was like, oh, well, Phil's making fun. No, I'm not making fun. Like, this is a legitimate observation. If you know that the comments are not just open to say whatever toxic thing you want, and you sit there spending hours posting up toxic comments, you are actually stupid. And you have to get a moment of self-awareness to realize you could be doing anything else with your time, and it's better for you. Like, you could be wiping your ass, and it's more productive. You could pick your nose, and it's more productive. You know what I mean? Like, these people are that dumb. So anyway, um, like I said, I looked, and maybe there was a small handful of comments. And it was like, one person was like, absolutely, I'll upgrade. That's fine. And another person was like, meh, I don't think I'm going to upgrade. And then I looked, and the person wasn't a member. It was a fucking idiot lying. I was like, wait a minute, this person was never a member to begin with. So what an asshole, right? So anyway, I didn't really get much feedback, and that kind of sucks. I was actually hoping to get at least a few dozen people who would be like, oh yeah, I'm a current member, and uh, you know, I'm either going to do it or not. Right now, I have no clue what's going to happen. And that makes me nervous. Because there's two reasons why that makes me nervous. Reason number one is because I like DSP Reacts. I like the idea of having a channel where I can react to content, we can do a weekly show, I can do reviews, I can do food vlogs. I like having that channel, and that content would not fit here, you understand? It has to be kind of its own separate thing, but I have to justify the existence of the time and effort I put into that channel, so it has to at least make something. It can't. I can't just do it for free as a hobby, it has to at least generate some revenue, you know, as part of a business. So, basically, you know, I, I, I'm nervous, that I'm gonna make this change and people are not gonna understand and then we're gonna go from having 100 paid members down to like 20. And that's gonna kill the channel, you know? Because this is the other half, that channel does make me a chunk, not a giant chunk, but a chunk of income every month, which makes it viable to do, all right? If that income goes away because of this nonsense going on that I can't control or fix, all right? Then I can't do the channel anymore. I don't want to say goodbye to DSP Reacts. I love that channel. I love doing content for it. I wish I could do more, but more people have said outright they want more gameplay than anything else. When I was doing more React stuff last year, I got complaints. So that's why I've limited how much I put on there. I don't want to see a year's worth of effort and time and your guys' viewership be m meaningless because of trolls. You know what I mean? I want to take the power out of the hands of the trolls. But I can't do it. You can by letting me know that, you know, you understand what's going on and that you're going to go to and, and still support the channel, you know. So hopefully that's what will happen. You know, I guess we'll see. But basically, I think what I'm going to do, it's either tonight or tomorrow, likely tomorrow. Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to cancel the standard and super member tiers. I'm going to set up two new tiers, entry and submissions. And... That it takes about a day because YouTube technically has to approve those tiers. So I, I'll put them in, and once YouTube approves them, then I'll officially launch them, and I'll have to do, you know, a video explaining, hey, this change has been made. Please now go re, re, re up memberships now or join as the new membership level you want now because, I you know, the support is needed to keep the channel going. And then what I got to do is get the threads up for those new levels so people can submit clips for Sunday's show. All right, or else it's just going to be ultra member submissions, which means it's going to be like two parts, and that's it. So, you know, that's what we got to do. Um, I I certainly hope that people are going to re up their membership, or not re up, but you know, sign up for the new membership levels, and that the show could continue. 
I would really, really, really hate for the show or the channel to fail now because of an uncontrollable thing by the troll. I don't want to give the trolls power, you understand? Because a lot of people are like, oh, why did you ever talk about it? Because the trolls were already affecting all my content negatively. If you don't know, there's a million attempts that these idiots try to do to ruin things for me. My business and my personal life, they do it all the time. I don't mention it. It's only when it directly affects stuff that I have to mention it. I had to mention it in this case. You guys were seeing all these gifted memberships come in and none of them were real. You know, we had goals and things every day and the goals were being smashed and nothing was happening. I wasn't benefiting from it, right? People were abusing this. You needed to know about it or else everyone's, like I said, people, there were legit people who thought, oh, Phil's made like thousands of extra dollars this month. I made less this month than I usually do and we're going to talk about that in a second because I want to let you know very matter of factly where I am right now in January because it ain't good because of all this going on. But that's the thing. People are looking at the channel and I was tracking memberships and they're like, <clears throat> whoa, Phil has like over a thousand members. He's doing super good this month. That's great. And that means I don't have to su help support this month because he's already doing so good. It was the opposite. But I didn't even know that until I figured out what was really going on. And it's like, well, then I got to tell everyone, right? So then I tell everyone, oh, why'd you talk about the trolls? What are you, what are you stupid? Because you have to. When they're directly affecting something public, you have to explain. If it's anything else that doesn't affect the stream that you don't, it's in my private life, I don't tell you guys. Like I said, they try it all the time to do that shit, and I just ignore it, and I don't tell you guys about it. It's only when it directly affects you guys publicly that you need to know about it. All right? All right. So that's coming. Basically, what I will do is uh, coming up tomorrow, likely. I'm probably going to cancel those membership levels on DSP Reacts, create the new ones. Hopefully what will happen is people will join and then I can set up the threads by, say, the weekend. People can, you know, nominate the new clips for the show and we can get a good show going on Sunday. Okay? We'll see what happens, I guess. Um, now, while all this is going on, <clears throat> DSP Throwback is actually doing quite well. Just so you guys know, you know, on Sunday night, I had my first ever stream on the channel, which was me commentating over the Red Dead 2010 playthrough. People loved it, supported it, and uh, so far, it's actually doing well. Right now on that channel, we have the Final Fantasy 13 playthrough and the Red Dead playthrough uploading, and it's alternating days. But now, I'm also uploading the parts of that stream from Sunday night, and those are doing well too. Like, actually, part one of that did like 800 plus views, and that's better than the daily uploads I'm doing of the, the the playthroughs. So people really liked the idea of me commentating over old me and really had a good time with it. And so I am excited for that. And I hope that you guys will continue to check it out. Um, So here's the thing. This week, the views on that channel are way up. And that's great. You know, there's no reason they wouldn't be. Not only do you get the daily uploads, but now you had the stream and now you have the daily portions of the stream going up there. The thing is, YouTube is absolutely dragging its feet, updating the total video views for the channel. Um, the way that it does criteria, let me let me switch over to that channel here on my account to explain here because I want to actually look at the stats. Um, so way, basically the, that channel, as of right now, is in the YouTube Partner Program, which means it can get memberships and it can get Super Chats. What it can't do is get ads yet because YouTube has this new criteria that you have to have 4,000 public watch hours in a year in order to qualify for ads, okay? Now, literally no one was watching the videos on that channel anymore, so it had like next to no views. But in the last couple of weeks that I've been uploading videos to the channel, it's gaining views, views, views. We're almost there, but YouTube's had the channel frozen at 3,672 watch hours for three days, and they haven't updated it. And it's, it's just their stupid automated system that arbitrarily updates every few days and then sometimes it freezes and then sometimes it unfreezes. It's bo it's crap, okay? Just like everything on YouTube, it's crap. The code is crap. It's fucking idiotic, idi idiocy, the way that they have, operate the site. So we've been, like I'm telling you right now, I know for a fact with the views that we got on Sunday and all the additional views I've been getting Sunday, Monday, now today for these videos of me doing commentary over the old Red Dead, we absolutely have gotten the, the view hours needed. There's no way we didn't. But the freaking thing isn't updating. So once it updates, then I can fully get that channel loaded into getting ads, and then there will be advertisements on those videos, okay? Uh, not all of them, because there's some of them, like I said, that Final Fantasy playthrough, 
Sadly, some of the, the videos got copyright issues, and I disputed them, and basically Square Enix is never going to respond, which is not shocking. These big companies, you'll get a, a content ID match or claim copyright on a video, and you'll say, well, this is bullshit. It's not legit. You dispute it. They just they ignore it. So you have to wait the arbitrary two, three weeks or whatever it is for it to just auto-clear. So once that's available obviously yeah i'm going to be putting ads on those videos and hopefully it'll generate something now will it generate a lot no i can tell you right now it won't because i have ads on the videos on dsp react and that doesn't make much so it'll be a little bit but it won't be a lot you know but at least it'll be something for the work that's going into that channel and i do want to say thank you to those who were there for the stream on sunday a few people legitimately joined as members or gifted memberships and some people did super chats and that helps right now. That's literally the only income I have on that channel. So thank you for that, okay? Okay, so that's the cumulative update of what's going on everywhere, okay? Cool. So now let's talk about the schedule coming up for the week because I'm very excited for this coming week. I really am. Um, so, tomorrow, or today, I should say, Baldur's Gate 3 continues, and we're heading into Act 2. This is exciting, because Act 2, people are saying a lot of different stuff happens. Um, and so, in Act 2, I think what I'm going to do is, number one, I'm going to swap out Will for Shadowheart. At this point now, we have, like, a great armor set for Shadowheart that we found. We've got this crazy good mace that we found, right? We have all this good stuff. So, I think what we're going to do is get Shadowheart loaded up with all this good equipment, and level her up because we haven't and get her to level six and then start using her people are saying she's quite good if you use her the right way at this higher level so i think we're going to do that um and then i am uh excited for of course uh getting into act two and whatever's going to happen now i don't know how to do it because people are saying there's different ways to do act two that if you enter it from where we are now you get into the shadowlands part and you have to deal with this this whole element of the story but I've heard that if you go from the Underdark, where we've cleared completely, and you do it from there, that you end up in a different spot, and it's different. So I don't even know what we should do. Maybe you guys will guide me and help me to determine what I, how I should do it, since I seem to have unlocked every possibility of how to get into this place. Uh, and we'll go from there. And as usual, I'm sure it's going to be a fun, engaging, interactive stream. I love playing uh, Baldur's Gate 3 with all of you, <clears throat> and hopefully it turns out well. Um... All right, and then tonight on the late stream, we're doing something a little different because on the late stream tonight, we're playing Pal World again. And this is a game that I played back on Saturday after it went virally popular, and it's it's interesting. It, you know, it's not the best uh, looking or polished game, but essentially it is a combination of many things. You know, survival aspects from games I've played before, like Don't Starve or or Dungeon Quest, or excuse me, uh, Dragon Quest Builders. Uh, it's got po obviously the Pokemon who are now called Pals. Um, it's got the building aspect of, of things like Minecraft. It's everything kind of combined. And I played it for three hours and basically got to a point where it was actually getting pretty entertaining. And then I ran out of time. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so we're going to be continuing with that tonight on the late stream and see how it goes. I hope you'll join me and, and chill. It's, it's, it is a chill stream. A lot of interaction and fun playing that game. So I hope you'll join me for that tonight, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time. And, and you know, what I'm, what I'm thinking is if this works out well, this could be the kind of game that I play every once in a while for a chill stream, much like when years ago I played Minecraft. If you remember, that was an ongoing session that I would do like once or maybe twice a week as a late night chill stream, and everyone would come and hang out with me, and we would talk while I did the elements of the game, and I'm really feeling like that's what that game can be. Only now it's a new virally popular version of that kind of a thing that people will actually care about, so that's what I'm thinking. But let's see how it goes, okay? Now, uh, on... Tomorrow, Wednesday, more Baldur's Gate 3, so we got even more Act 3, and then it's going to be a late night stream of Sea of Stars, all right? Now, after tomorrow night's stream of Sea of Stars, I literally don't know when I'm going back to the game, because with new releases, Baldur's Gate 3, and maybe even Pal World in the mix, I really don't know when we're going to have time. The thing is, I love Sea of Stars, I absolutely want to go back and finish that game, but we have to find the right time for it. So for those who are fans of the game, tune in tomorrow and then uh, kind of give it a little bit of a, a hiatus send off I hope and then we can enjoy it maybe in the future later this year when there's more time for it right okay I'm off on Thursday when I return on Friday it's the big new premieres day you've got Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth that will premiere on the first stream and then we've got Tekken 8 that will premiere for Friday Night Fights so the first stream is going to be cool intro and narrative based stuff 
in Like a Dragon, probably getting the gang set up. Uh, you know, I'm assuming the game starts in Japan, and then there's got to be a justification for why they go to Hawaii. So I guess that's probably what we're doing on Friday. And then Friday Night Fights is Tekken 8, and I've decided this time around, all I'm going to do is jump right into online play. I'm not going to dick around. I'm not going to waste time. I just want to play this game right now online and mess around and see how I can do on day one. Because day one, we'll have the most entry-level people who don't know what they're doing. Even though I'm not good at Tekken, I do have an entry-level, you know, uh, idea of what I'm doing. I mean, if you watched the demo yesterday, I beat all the ultra-hard AIs, like literally every one I defeated. So I'm thinking it'll probably be fun to just jump in and just play online and see how it goes, right? So that's what I'm going to do Friday night, just jump right to hell into online play, all right? Now, Saturday, I'm going to flip the streams. The daytime stream will be Tekken 8, and I'll either do story mode or arcade mode. I don't know which I want to do. Maybe I'll do a poll and you guys can pick. Do you want to see the story or do you want to see arcade? And we'll do that as the daytime stream. And then Saturday night will be Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Sunday will be DSP versus the internet. Now with the newly set up membership tiers, I guess we're going to have to see how it goes and if it works out or not. And then Sunday night, uh, probably I'll do Tekken again and maybe I'll do some more online play that night. And then probably Monday, we'll do Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth daytime stream and Tekken at night. And then basically the rest of the week, we got to play it by ear because it's the two new releases. People want to see those the most. But I know what's going to happen is people are going to say, well, what happened to Baldur's Gate? Why aren't you playing it? So maybe we'll try to squeeze in a stream of Baldur's Gate at some point during the week. I don't know. Maybe it would have to be late night stream. I don't know. <clears throat> I guess I'll have to figure it out. But I just know that, you know, we're going to have to juggle everything. It's going to be challenging for the first week or two until things settle down a little bit. And then we can get more adjusted into a, a regular schedule of stuff. Okay. So, so there you go. And that's going to be next week. And it should be exciting. And it should be fun. And it should be a good balance of a lot of new stuff with ongoing stuff. I'm excited for it. Okay? Um, keep in mind, upcoming, we do have the Super Bowl event, the Super Bowl bash. Hold on. I think I have the picture for that. And this is coming up on Saturday, February, February 10th. Uh, it's a marathon where I'll be dressed up in various NFL jerseys and a helmet and I have props and stuff, and my wife's going to be making various homemade versions of Super Bowl snacks that we'll be eating over the course of the day and trying and taste testing, which should be fun. Really, I'll be, I'll be drinking as well. I know I'll have some liquor. I don't know what yet, but I know I'll have some liquor. The question is, what do you want to see me do? And again, the options are, number one, continue the offline-style playthroughs that I've been doing, including maybe Tekken 8 content, uh, Like a Dragon content, maybe some Baldur's Gate, stuff like that. Option number two would be all online competitive play, such as Tekken 8 multiplayer, maybe go back to Street Fighter 6 multiplayer for a bit, and maybe some Modern Warfare multiplayer. Or try to play NFL games, but I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm not sure if that's going to be worth it because I can't really find anything that's free. Everything's like you got to buy, and it's you know to buy something to play for 45 minutes during a marathon probably isn't worth it. Um, we could play Tecmo Bowl, but, you know, and the other thing is people are like, well, set up your emulator on your mini PC. Okay, and when should I do that? We're in the midst of all these new releases coming out. What stream time should I take away to set up my mini PC to do this kind of emulation that you're talking about? Because I don't have time off stream to do it. So when exactly do we want to sacrifice to do that, right? And the answer is, of course, no one wants to do that. Now, some people are saying Madden's free. Yeah, and Madden, I'm never going to learn Madden in 45 minutes. All you're going to see is me not know what I'm doing, get frustrated, and waste time, you see? So it's totally up to you guys. Let's, let's keep talking about it. All right, so we figure out exactly what we want. But I'm excited for the event. It's the first marathon of the year. All right, now I just want to talk briefly, and I promise you I'm not going to go on about this endlessly. But I want to give everyone an update on what's really going on right now between me and all my YouTube channels and everything performance-wise because, yeah, right now things aren't great. And, you know, there's a multiple combination of factors going on. First of all, we're in January, all right? January traditionally is the worst month of the year on YouTube for anything. Why? Because the holidays are over, so that you know everyone gets you know extra views and stuff around then. That's over with, and all the ad revenue's gone. Like no exaggeration, you go from insanely high ad revenue to like nearly nothing. Right. So it ends up happening for someone like me who's consistent. You know, I'm not one of the people who I put all my best content in the last three months of the year and pump out five times more videos to make extra money. I consistently put out content all year long because I treat it like a real job and I want you guys to have good content all year long, not only inflated and boosted so I can get extra dough for it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of YouTubers do that. I don't. 
So what ends up happening is a month like January. For me, it's business as usual. I'm putting out content. I'm having fun. And in general, you guys have been equally as supportive this month as you always are. You know, tip level is great. You know, people are supporting the Baldur's Gate 3 streams. Um, and in general, overall, all that's great. You know, super chats, no real complaints. They're not down or anything this month. Things are going good. But what's ended up happening this month, it's a combination of factors. Number one, I'm always down in January because of the ad revenue. So that little bit of ad revenue that I do get, not to say that it's like insane amounts of money, but still, I usually have it, and this month I don't have it. Now, normally, you'd be like, okay, so it's kind of tight in January. That's okay. The problem now is this membership thing, okay? So to give you guys some perspective, I'm literally going to pull up stats for you right now to let you know what I'm talking about because I want people to understand what I mean when I talk about this stuff, okay? So to give you some perspective, all right, this month, the month of January, <clears throat> all right, we have received, just listen to this, 1,300 new memberships on top of the existing memberships that we had, all right? So in total, right now, this channel currently has 1,655 memberships. Yeah. But if you actually do the math, on how many of those are legit and I'm actually getting paid for, all right? It's only around 500. Now, last month, I had over 800, and those were all legit, all right? So the funny part about this whole thing is, on paper, it looks like I'm doing so much better, and in reality, I'm doing way worse. In fact, you know, looking at the statistics here, I'm staring at it. It says, revenue that you made on memberships now versus last month, okay? No exaggeration, it claims that I have lost money. You know, last month, I, I had a certain amount, and it says here, about 37% decrease in the money that I would make on memberships, right? Now, why have I lost 37% of my revenue on memberships? Because of the trolls. And this is bullshit. They shouldn't have that kind of power on the channel, and they just do. And there's nothing that I can do to fix that, okay? Um... I went from a situation where this channel was strong and doing really well in December and people were not only becoming members but gifting memberships to the community and there was this feeling of awesome support all around for the holidays, right? And then in the last week and a half, two weeks, that these fake memberships have been given out, all that's gone away because no one's going to become a member if they're getting a gifted membership and no one's going to renew their membership if they're getting a gifted membership, right? So basically what's happened is literally only a very small handful of people are becoming members now. So, and this is just now. We still have over a week left in the month, right? So, it, within two weeks, I'm down 37% revenue. Can you imagine in another week? I might be down 50, 60% revenue for memberships this month. And memberships are a good chunk of the revenue I make on DSP Gaming, okay? That's awful. And that's, again, that's not, oh, the ad revenue's down and that's gonna come back. That's, trolls have broken YouTube. And I can't fix that, okay? So, basically what, I, what I'd like to say here is thank you guys because everything else you've been doing, super chats, tips, engaging in the streams, everything has been great. But this memberships thing potentially is going to hurt me bad. Now, at the same time that's going on, keep in mind, I have to now change all the memberships on DSP React, right? So now what happens if I do that and half the people don't become members over there? So now not only am I down 37% revenue on this channel, now I lose the revenue on that channel too. Now what am I going to do? That's the situation I'm in right now. So I don't feel good. I feel very nervous and I feel shitty. And it's, again, not something that I can fix. This is a problem that YouTube has and trolls have exploited. So what can you do? All I can say is ch check out the content and please support it. You know, one thing you could say as well there are new games coming out Friday. You're right. I have to buy them, so that's even more money invested, right? But hopefully, people will come out and support the new games. I really hope they will. I hope you guys will show up for those playthroughs and, and support those streams, right? If you do, then maybe this isn't a problem. If, for the if the last week of the month ends up actually being a really great one and everyone's supportive and the streams do well, then it's not a big deal. Right? But that's kind of a big if, Hail Mary, hoping, right? 
as opposed to something more consistent. Like, I'm nervous right now. I'm looking at the at what it says DSP Gaming made the last month versus this month. It's down an insane amount. Like I said, about 37% decrease in revenue on the channel. That's terrible, you know? Imagine doing the same work you did last month, and everyone's telling you everything you're doing is great, and then you get paid, and you get paid only 60% of the money you made last month. Your paycheck's way less. What happened? Oh, well, some trolls fucked with us, so we can't pay you this month. What? <laughs> That's my life right now. It's like, how is that fair? So, um, what can be done? Well, nothing that I can do. There's nothing I can do to fix the situation. If you like my content, please support it in some way. All right? Legitimately. Legitimately become a member. Legitimately give some memberships to someone um, to help the community. Uh, but do super chats. Super thanks. If you watch this podcast on demand every day, and I know many and many of you do, do a super thanks. I almost never get any super thanks on my videos. Like, it's insanely rare. I'll get one or two a month tops across all three of my channels. So, if you're someone who watches all the content on demand, if you're a longtime viewer, please consider now helping to support because I really need to help right now. I'm down a third because of this trolling bullshit, okay? Um, but outside of that, that's about it. That's all I can say. Support the streams, and if you're an on-demand viewer, please consider a super thanks or a tip. You'll see in the description of every video I upload the tips link. You could still tip whether you're on a stream or not. You know, you don't. I don't have to be live for you to tip or anything like that. That would help a ton. Okay, so thank you. And I, again, I don't like bringing this shit up, but I have to. This is my livelihood. What can I do to fix it? Nothing. I didn't create the situation because I don't work at YouTube, right? I can't fix the situation because I don't work at YouTube. And I'm not a piece of shit troll who thinks it's funny, you know? Again, what these idiots don't realize, right? They like the content so much that I make because they want to make fun of it, right? Great, so make fun of it. But when you hurt my livelihood doing this shit, now you, you have basically made it harder for me to keep doing this. If you think that the throwback channel's funny and the react channel's funny and the stuff I do on this channel is a comedy, you know, riot, why are you hindering my ability to make the content? What you're doing is counterproductive. It makes no fucking sense. It just proves you're an idiot, right? So it sucks, but you know what can you do? I, again, I wish I could fix it. I can't. You know why am I bringing it up? Cause this is real life shit that's affecting this stream and everything I do on YouTube. This is not some dumb troll behind the scenes and I can ignore it. This is something that's directly affecting everything publicly and it sucks. <clears throat> okay, so please consider. What's funny is Zen Shuriken says, of course he's worried. That's thousands of dollars a year. Zen Shuriken, that's thousands of dollars a month. A month. That's what I mean. I just said I'm down 33, 37%. That's thousands of dollars that I need to pay my bills that I'm not making now because of this idiot. Okay? <clears throat> so, again, thank you to anyone who likes the content and supports it in any way. Please consider it. All right? And then you get an idiot like this guy, Stimpy. That's your problem, not ours. Wrong. You're the one here watching the content. I won't be here making content anymore if this continues, you dumb idiot. That's the point I'm making. I'm not some rich YouTuber rolling in money that I can take this hit. You fucking idiotic, brain-dead moron leaving a dumb comment in a chat and acting like you know what you're talking about. All right? I'm a normal guy like you. When I lose thousands of dollars in a month, it fucks me up. All right? So that's why I can't have this happen. I need people to hopefully do something to help me in this case. You know, this next week, all these new games coming out, please support these streams. <clears throat> okay. How much is 37%? It's about a third, roughly. A third of my income has gone away this month. Compared to the last several months, a third of my income is gone because of this trolling nonsense. Yeah. Like I said, like no one is becoming a member. That's the problem. It's like normally every day I get memberships. Every day I get new members and I get people who gift memberships to the community. Now no one is re-upping their memberships and no one is gifting legit memberships. It's very small. There's a few people who are doing it and thank you to those who are, but it's gone away and that's revenue I rely on. <clears throat> uh, 
All right, so that's it. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I don't, you know, it, it sickens me to have to fucking waste time talking about this shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, so let's just move on positively, all right? Let's get out of this topic and hopefully just kind of relax and have some conversation today and not have to worry about this so much. I don't, I, I, it's always on my mind, this shit. And yeah, it weighs heavily upon my mind. It absolutely does. But I don't want to be sitting here talking about it all fucking day. It just pisses me off. You know, it shouldn't be like this. Someone like me who's been working his ass off for all these years shouldn't be at the mercy yet again of YouTube being lazy and not doing their fucking jobs as a business and basically just fucking everything up and having giant loopholes and being, you know, stupid. But once again, here we are again with YouTube not doing their fucking jobs and now I have to suffer for it. So it's just life. You know, at this point, it's just an inevitability. If you want to be a content creator, you're at the mercy of the ineptitude of the system that you use to put your content on the internet. YouTube is inept. They always have been. I've told you guys this so many times, 15 years. Every change they make to this site fucks it up, and then they have to fix it after the fact. They have no true beta testing of anything. They just hard launch and fuck the whole site up. <clears throat> They're never aware of these loopholes. They're never aware of these problems. I told you the story. Two years ago, I discovered an actual legitimate site breaking bug that if that bug was not fixed it could have destroyed YouTube okay I contacted YouTube support I explained it I gave them step-by-step -step instructions of how to replicate it screenshots everything and the person that I was talking to argued with me that I was not right or that you know it wasn't correct I said I had to plead with them I was like please for all that is holy and good Please trust me. I've been doing this for 15 years. I wouldn't waste your time. I want this business to continue. Here's the evidence. Please forward this to the appropriate parties. So all that happened, they responded with a form letter response, closed the log, and then about two months later, I figured it out. They, they fixed it. So they did listen to me, but they ignored me and fought with me over it before they would even consider you know, putting it up the chain and having someone smart look at it. And the person who eventually got it in their hands said, oh shit, and fixed it, and now that loophole's closed. You see? But YouTube doesn't listen to me. I try, you know, how many times can I fight with them over these things? You know, I don't have that power anymore. <clears throat> Perhaps if big YouTubers stood up and teamed up about this, and said, hey, let's do content, let's talk about this, let's put it out in a vlog so everyone knows this is a problem on YouTube then it would be fixed. I don't have that power anymore. At one point I did, but what ended up happening was all these idiots on the internet made me into the internet meme, the internet joke, and the internet whipping boy. So when you made a lol cow out of me, you took my power away to help with these issues that I discovered. Congrats. I hope you think it was worth it that YouTube is broken because, you know, <laughs> here you go now, right? Is your Whose fault is that? I would love to help. I can't. You took the power out of my hands for your own jollies and laughs, right? So... I can't do anything about it. People need to step up and help who actually have a voice. I don't have a voice, all right? <clears throat> what was the bug I discovered? Well, I'm not going to fully tell you, but basically there was a way that people could make uh, dummy accounts. That's all I'm going to say. Like, basically, if people found a giant loophole of making dummy accounts on YouTube, and it could ruin the entire site the way that they did it. Like, it was creating a big problem. Um... For everyone. Like, it, it literally could have broken channels and everything the way that it was set up. So, <clears throat> I showed them everything, and then they fixed it. So, <clears throat> anyway, uh, that's that. Let's move on, shall we? Let's not dwell on this nonsense. Let's start talking about a lot of other stuff, right? <laughs> okay. Um, well, I was going to say let's do shout-outs, but we literally don't have any YouTube site shout-outs at all. No Super Chats, no memberships, nothing there. Um... Checking on tips. Currently, okay. First tip of the day is One Minute Man. With a $20 tip, he says, consider using Halson for Act 2. He may be of help in the Shadowlands. Shadowheart can step in later. Yeah, but I don't like him. I don't like him, nor did I have... I got. I don't have any gear for him. I, I got rid of it. Like, I didn't know that I was going to have a Druid in my party, so I sold all my Druid gear. And now I have a druid. I'm like, well, fuck it. I really, I'm particularly, I don't think I want him in my party. I, you know, the character's kind of boring too. Uh, so I don't think so. 
If I see if I had known that there was gonna be a druid early on, I probably would have saved all the shit. But I know for a fact I sold all that shit to make money. And now I'm kind of boned because I don't have any gear for him. So he's gonna end up sucking, so I'm I'm probably not doing that. Oh, my nose. Okay. Thank you, one minute man, for the first contribution of the day. <clears throat> we are okay all right so guys that's all we got for now uh, let's let's open up Q&A here. If any contributions come in, I'll shout them out. But let's open up the channel to Q&A. If anyone wants to talk, just tag me in the chat. Let's see what you guys want to chat about before we get started. I didn't ban anyone. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. I was updating the leaderboard. People were all doing the, the ban emo. I didn't ban anybody. <clears throat> Did I play the original Duke Nukem, Doom, and Wolfenstein games? The original Duke Nukem is a side-scrolling platformer. I never played that one. I played Duke Nukem 3D. I played Doom and Doom 2 and Ultimate Doom. And I did play Wolfenstein 3D. Yes, I played all of those. But the original Duke Nukem is not what you think. <laughs> Can we start calling trolls troll cows because they're the real lol cows? Uh, actually, that's interesting. <laughs> that's an interesting name. Has anyone termed that name yet? Troll cows? Because that's exactly what they are. They're the they're the real fucking clowns to be milked, right? <clears throat> Not me. I just sit here fucking playing games. Like we were at, we had literally no drama, nothing going on whatsoever. We were fine, and then someone finds a fucking loophole in YouTube and creates chaos, right? So it's like you're the joke. Everything here. The reason that that you're getting anything out of me is because you're the one fucking everything up for everybody. You're the loser. I didn't make a mistake. Here, you want to make fun of me? Make fun of me in Street Fighter. I'm swearing at people. Fine. That's legit. Make That's the lol cow crap you get out of me, right? I freak out playing a fighting game. I get upset and I swear about the netcode and shit. Fine. Fair enough. That's huge criticism. And you could you have a, the right to do that. But when you're fucking with my livelihood to try to get some kind of a reaction, that's just insane, you know? And by the way, and I should say this too, even people on like Kiwi Farms and shit don't support that. But it's funny because they still do it, you know? But they don't even support it. Like, I know for a fact that that guy who owns Kiwi Farms doesn't want people messing with people's livelihoods and stuff. He outright says it. He's like, that's not what I want. I don't want this site to be that. I don't want you guys doing that. That's not the whole idea. The idea of a lol cow culture is that someone apparently is so much of a messed up mess in their own life that they're just going to make mistakes on their own. And then you observe the mistakes and you laugh at them. So you're milking them for the content, right? You just laugh at their misfortune. You don't create the misfortunes for them because that could be anyone. Like, literally, if you're creating misfortune for anyone, of course their life's going to be fucked up. That's your fault. That's not because they made a mistake. That's because you fucked around and messed with their life. That's the opposite of the mentality of the lol cow, right? That's malicious. That's different. And that's what these people are doing, and it's really fucked up. <clears throat> Uh, I don't care who I fight in Street Fighter. I don't give two fucks. Like I, as I said, when you're when you're playing fighting games in any kind of a competitive capacity, especially if you're in ranked online, um, everyone's fair game for criticism and everyone's fair game for shit talking. I don't personally research every person who I've played in every fighting game. I'm pretty sure in the 15 years I've been playing fighting games online, I've probably played a ridiculous amount of people of every single race, creed, level of accessibility. Uh, you know, player skill, you know, gender, and all of that. And nothing that I've ever said against any of them is considered personal. It's just shit talk when you play online. If anyone tries to spin it in any other way, they can go fuck themselves because they're losers just trying to stir up drama on the internet, and I hope that they get fucked. Like, I hope they trip and fall on a cactus and it gets shoved up their ass and they can't walk straight for the rest of their lives because that's what they deserve for trying to create drama where it doesn't exist, you know? Shit talk in the fighting game community has always been there and especially when I'm criticizing, especially 
you know, someone's game. That's literally what I'm criticizing, their game. That's it. I don't know who the person is on the other end of the internet. I'm not personally attacking anyone. So no one should be afraid to just be able to have criticism of someone's game and if you think that people should like pussyfoot around fighting games or shooters or anything because you're afraid someone on the other end of the internet might be sensitive, fuck that. It's called freedom of speech. <clears throat> so nice try trying to create drama. It ain't going to work on me, bitches. Nice try, but fuck off. Okay. <clears throat> Nemesis T type, please shut up. <laughs> <laughs> please shut up. <clears throat> anyway. All right. So, what do you guys really want to talk about today? That's not drama nonsense. <laughs> oh, I likely will check out Godzilla Minus One if it hits a streaming service, yes. <clears throat> DC, thank you for two months as a member. He says, happy two months of being a, me a member. Take care. Thank you so much. Have I ever played a game that really terrified me? Eh, not necessarily terrified. Like, the, ga the game that scared me the most, honestly, was always Resident Evil 1. Because that was the first real survival horror game for me. I know that there were actually other games before that that were considered horror. But that was the first real game that I thought as, like, it's wow, it's a horror movie. Right? <laughs> With the scary, ominous music. The camera angles, the hard-to-shoot enemies, the limited ammo, the dogs jumping through the windows in the hallway of the mansion scaring you. Like, I literally had to run to the bathroom. I'm not kidding. Like, it scared me. My heart was pumping. And I, I after I killed the dogs, I ran and p had to piss that first time I ever played it. I was like, holy shit. So that would probably be it. The thing is, like, after that, you kind of, once you play more of those games, you become more and more desensitized to it. So it's not nearly as scary, right? I would say psychological horror games these days are more scary. Like, for example, the game Soma literally made me think about my own mortality. It made me think about AI and is is could AI be real life too? Is it a, is there a, is there some such a thing as a soul? You know, having those big those big thoughts could be scary to some people. Most people go through their lives every day and never think about shit like that. So to actually have a game make you think big picture stuff like that is kind of scary almost. So I would say something like that, but yeah, the, do games legit scare me? No, not really. Oh, uh, thank you, Big Ocho. Big Ocho did a legit gifted membership, and it went to Zen Shuriken. So congrats, Zen Shuriken, on getting that gifted membership. I know actually Zen Shuriken has been waiting to get it, uh, 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 get a membership, and he just got one. So congrats on that, and thank you, Big Ocho, for supporting the channel. Now a million things came in at once, and I missed them all. Holy shit! Uh. No, I didn't pre-order any games yet. Like I said, probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow by the end of my end of my work day. But so that way I, I have them pre-loaded. Uh I'll probably buy the games and have them load over my day off. So that I'll have them for Friday. Um I think Infinite Wealth, I'll probably at the least I'll probably get the middle version, because the middle version has the two extra classes and some extra content. I don't know if I'm gonna go with the crazy. There's a crazy version that's way more expensive. <laughs> And I think you get a ton of extra content, not only for, like, the Sujimon, which I think is the fighting, the optional fighting minigame thing, but also <clears throat> uh, for your island, which is, the virtual island is the, the content I'm expecting to do with my wife, Kat, here on co-op streams. So maybe it'll be worth it. I think I think we'll, my wife and I will probably come to our determination and buy it and preload it, you know, during the day off, figure that out. But, no, I haven't done anything yet. And, and Tekken 8, I'm just going to get the standard version. I looked at the other versions. Essentially, the reason you pay more is because you're getting the season pass, and I'm not sold that I'm going to keep playing this game. You know, I don't know yet. It's not like Street Fighter where I kind of guaranteed I was going to try it for the long haul. This one I didn't know. Um, so I'm probably just going to get the standard version. You don't really get much else. Okay. 
So, by the way, guys, once again, I, I apologize. I, I, I'm paranoid, and I'm just going to say, if anyone tipped me besides One Minute Man, I haven't gotten it. So let me know if you tipped me and it didn't go through. Maybe just no one did, and that's fine if no one did. But usually I get a few tips on the pre-stream, and it makes me nervous that I'm not getting anything again. I get paranoid because these idiots are fucking with my livelihood every day. So hopefully things are working. <clears throat> Thank you, Cork. Cork says, no question. Just want to wish you well on your coming stream and have a fabulous day. Thank you. <clears throat> Six seventy two says you should engage with comments more on your on demand videos. It might in turn entice people to leave super thanks. Uh, I try, <clears throat> but I'll be honest with you, six seventy two, not a ton of people leave very many comments because I think just just the idea that my comments were off for so many years that they're just not used to doing it. And the few that do, I'm very appreciative. You'll see any comments I any comment that you see on my videos in the last two three years, I saw every one of those. I approved those myself. Okay, but. <clears throat> But basically, there's not a lot of conversational stuff there, right? Not that I... Every once in a while, there will be. Or if someone has a direct, important question, I actually will respond. There's just not a lot of opportunity. If people actually did leave me more comments that were open to conversation, I probably would talk back and forth with people in the comments more. But it just doesn't... It's not that nature. I mean, I, I challenge you. Go check comments on any video I've uploaded in the last two weeks, and you would see what's on there, and you'd be like, oh, I get it. Like, there's really no one who's talking in a back-and-forth manner with Phil. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, I don't have any thoughts about Until Dawn being made into a movie. It'll probably just be a horror movie, right? It could be good. I don't know if it'll be good. It's it's a shame because it's been almost 10 years since the game was made. And a lot of those actors don't even look the same. Like, what's her name? Hayden Panettiere or whatever. Like, I just saw her in the Scream movie last year. She looks totally different. She's older now. So she looks like an older woman. It's like, well, she wouldn't fit the role of the teenager being in the cabin, right? Like, it wouldn't make sense. So they're probably going to have to recast everyone um, to do the movie. But the movie could be good. It's a good plot. It's definitely a good horror movie plot. I guess the question is, will it be nearly as good because the whole point of the game is, like, to choose your options? And if you, the element of choice is taken away and it's just a, oh, here's what happened kind of a deal, then I don't know if it'll really work as a movie. I don't know. <clears throat> Did I have any gangs in my neighborhood growing up? I I'm sure. I just, I didn't engage with them or know about them. I was young. I was too young. And then by the time that I was getting, becoming a teenager, I was not doing shit in my neighborhood. I was driving away and doing arcade stuff for Street Fighter. So I wouldn't really know. Uh, yes, I'm interested in the Indiana Jones game. It looks pretty good. It's from the makers of Wolfenstein, so they have a good track record, and I'm interested in it. Yes. <clears throat> you can't have a conversation in your comment section so people don't comment. Yes, you can. What are you talking about? What happens is if you leave a comment on a YouTube video, okay, one of my videos, it goes into a queue, and automatically, if you if you say something nasty, like a big swear or an insult, it just gets deleted. I don't even see it. YouTube just tosses it, okay? <clears throat> then there's people who just leave comments and YouTube can't determine, so I review those. And if it's a comment that's, you know, considered a, a positive comment, or even if it's constructive criticism, that goes up too. Basically, anything but insults goes up on the video, okay? So, yes, you can have a conversation. You leave the comment... And then I review it, and I approve it, and then you could respond to that with your own, and I'll see that response, and I'll approve it. You can have a conversation. It's not actively live, but it you know it takes a day or two for me to just sift through comments and approve them. But is it is it true? I don't know if this is true or not. Can you enable it so that if someone responds to your YouTube comment, you get a notification somehow? I don't know if, if that's true or not. It used to be like that. It used to be that you could actually set it up that you had a section that you could see all your comments and you could see who responded to your comments. So that's how you would do it. But I don't know. I mean, YouTube's changed so many times over the years. I have no idea if that even exists anymore, right? Um, <clears throat> Dark Gaming says he disabled comments on his main channel. None of my comments yesterday showed up. Dark Gaming, I personally approved all of your comments. They're all there. <laughs> I remember. I checked last night and I saw your comments and I said, approve, approve, approve. <clears throat> what it is is you're so used to the comments instantly posting 
on everyone else's channel that you're not used to a, a channel that has this level of protection to stop the trolling. You got to understand, before I had this, it literally 99% of posts on my channel were insult, insult, racism, sexism, like all things that were disgusting and toxic. And all my viewers asked me to actually turn off comments because they couldn't enjoy the videos anymore. So I did. And then YouTube instituted this way to filter comments. And now the comments are better. <clears throat> so there you go. I specifically know I saw Dark Gaming's comments because he has the, the uh, Kirby avatar. And I remember approving all of his, his Kirby comments. <clears throat> What's up, Jade? Good to see you here today. Okay, um, I received a $5 tip, so apparently tips are working. Thank you. From Smelly Vision. <laughs> says, here's $5 for your content. Thank you so much, Smelly Vision. <clears throat> yes, I'm, I'm aware that Pal World is in the insane smash viral hit of the year. Over 6 million copies now sold. Almost got up to 2 million concurrent Steam players. It's insane the amount of people who are playing this game right now. Um... Like, here's the thing. I get it because it's addictive and, and it's easy to jump into. But at the same time, I don't get why that many people are playing it besides viral popularity for the sake of social media viral popularity. It's it's not anything that's groundbreaking or a right home about. <clears throat> um, you know. But I, I don't know. These, a lot of these viral popular games, they get popular for unknown reasons, right? Yeah, it's, t it's a time waster, but it's a fun time waster. I'll admit that. Like, at first when I started playing, I didn't know what I was doing. By the end of the three hours, I was actually liking it. I was like, oh, I can't wait. To I want to play more later this week because I was enjoying my time in there. <clears throat> Avarice says, would you live premiere on-demand videos so people can comment and, c and do conversation in real time? You know, I don't understand how that works. and I, it, That's why I've never done it. I know that you can... Any video that you schedule on YouTube, you can set as a live premiere. And I don't exactly know how that works. I, I guess what you're saying is when the video is live premiering, people can comment on it in a live chat version rather than the on-demand comments version. I don't know how that works at all. If we talk about that and figure it out, I'd be down to figure it out. I, I don't understand it, though. Keep in mind, though, those live premieres, there's not going to be any moderation. That's kind of the bummer. Like, there would never be any moderation, so there's potentially it would be just toxic people going in there and being toxic, and no one could stop it. <clears throat> what should people do if they're gifted one of these fake memberships and can't afford a higher tier? Absolutely nothing. You don't do anything. <laughs> what do you, nothing's expected of you. you it, it's a loophole in the YouTube system. It ain't your fault you got it. So what, why would I... Well, no one's asking anything of you. Why would you even say that? It's like a semi-live stream. You watch with viewers and you comment as it plays along. If, basically, if there's no way to moderate it, then I wouldn't do it. You know? It doesn't make sense unless unless there's a way to moderate it, then I'm never going to do it. I have to have moderation on all my content because of these crazy people on the internet. You know? It has to be safe for the viewers. It can't just be, oh, it's a live premiere. Let me check out the video. Oh, look, racism, sexism, insults, doxing, fucked up stuff. I can't do that. You know, I can't. No, for the <laughs> Sarah. Please don't take offense about uh, uh, my response, but to answer your question for the millionth time, no, I'm not putting this podcast on Spotify. I'm not putting this podcast on Apple Music. The idea is to get people to come to this channel, subscribe to this channel, and support this channel. If I split the podcast and put it other places, then I'm not getting support for my business. You know what I'm saying? There's no point to putting this other places. I need people to come here and support this business. This is my livelihood. It doesn't help me to put it other places. So I'm not doing that. <clears throat> Do I have a favorite 8 or 16-bit soundtrack from a game? Oh, man. Mega Man 2 and 3? 
have super duper good soundtracks for an 8-bit game. Super Mario Brothers 3. Pretty great soundtrack for an 8-bit game. Uh, oh, Castlevania. The Castlevanias. Just epic. Every, every one of them has an epic song that resonates that you never forget, right? <clears throat> it's pretty good. Dark Gaming says, Did ever think about starting up pa Patreons for other channels? See, here's the thing. The deal with Patreon is, and this I didn't understand when I, I launched my Patreon way back when, people are expecting that when they pay to a Patreon that they're getting something out of it, okay? They think it's Kickstarter. It's not, but they think it's Kickstarter, okay? So when I started with my Patreon back in the day, and I was like, hey, if you want to support this channel, you could do a Patreon, and maybe we'll have tiered rewards if we hit this level of support. People thought it was transactional. And then what would happen is, if I couldn't live up, to the expectation of what people wanted, then they would all be upset, okay? So basically after learning the hard way a couple times when I, I tried to make realistic but interesting goals, and then we hit the goals, but then I basically couldn't live up to the, the promise of what I was gonna do with those goals, everyone you tried to make drama out of it and complain. I said, well, I just don't care about it anymore. So when I became a, a full-time streamer in 2017, Patreon just became a way that if you want to support me behind the scenes, maybe you're an on-demand viewer of all my content here, you never come to streams, and you still want to support, pledge to my Patreon a couple bucks a month. That helps, right? Easy way, auto-sub, does it behind the scenes, no muss, no fuss, no stress, there you go, right? Or, uh, right now, the main use of my Patreon is for people who want to get private videos made every month, whether it's a private react, a Q&A video, whatever it may be. $50 pledge, I'll make a private video for you every month, and I do a few of those every month, and that helps out. It really does. Um, but outside of that, if I were to make a Patreon for, say, DSP Throwback, immediately what would happen is people would say, well, I want something for it, so let's do this and this and this. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm already working six days a week full-time. I'm juggling DSP Gaming, DSP Throwback, DSP Reacts already. I don't have time to do extra rewards. And that's what I mean. If you try to set up something like that, people immediately expect, well, what's the extra thing you're doing for it? I, I literally can't do anything extra. I'm already stretched to my limits with the time that I have. Like, no exaggeration, right now, sitting on my desk over there is a pile of bills that I have to pay. I have to start working on taxes, okay? Um, I've got to do this... DSP reacts thing with the canceling the membership, setting up the new membership goals, doing all that. I have to pre-order the games for Friday and install them on my consoles. Like this is what I've got sitting on my lap that I haven't done yet because I have so much other shit going on that I have to get done this week, right? So that's my life. You know, I don't have time to say, hey, let's set up a Patreon and brainstorm even more goals and rewards over there, right? And then. <laughs> And they keep doing more. I, I can't. I'm one guy. And again, I think what it is is there's a misconception that because I'm such a long-running YouTuber and so many people talk about me, that I'm some kind of a big-time guy. I'm not. I don't have a staff of people working behind me helping me with stuff. You know, I have a couple editors helping me with DSP Throwback. That's great. But I'm the one-man show making all this new content and keeping it all in order every day. You know, I don't have a t crack team of employees that I hired and are working with me to do all this stuff. So, you know, it is what it is. I can't, I, I, I understand what you're saying. A lot of people who have multiple YouTube channels then set up Patreons for each one. Support it on this Patreon, support it on that. But I don't have the time to do the extra work. I'm already putting in tons of work on each channel, so I can't do any more right now, you know? I'm, I'm already stretched to the limits, so. Have I thought about playing the new Lords of the Fallen eventually? At this point, I think that ship has sailed and no one really gives a shit, right? We had an opportunity to play it, and no one really cared. People wanted me to do other stuff, so I did. People really wanted Baldur's Gate, so that's what we played. Yeah. All right, Jada, I will see you tonight for Pal World. Sounds good. Oh, I have no idea. Cheetah Man says, what kind of big rages did you receive in your Twitch days? I have no recollection. I never really paid attention to any of that. I have no idea who raided me or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I that was all usually people who raided me was not for good reasons it wasn't like oh I'm coming in to support Phil it would be like hey we all hate Phil let's go raid him and have everyone fucking talk shit in his chat so I, I had a completely different experience with raids than most other people did
Bookworm, you literally just asked me a question about personal finances and things behind the scenes that's no one's public business talking about. Why do you think I would have answered your question? <laughs> right? Why do you think I would have answered that in any way, shape, or form? It's private stuff. Like, no content creator is going to come on their stream and start talking about how they handle that stuff. So why would you ask me that and expect I would answer it? I mean, I'm just being honest. I don't believe that the VR gaming era ever really existed. Because Korg says, do you think the VR aiming gear, gaming era has died out? The mystique behind it has vanished. I don't think it ever existed. I think it was fluff and hype and people jumping on a hype bandwagon and you know the people who spent all that money spending all that money and trying to get as much as they could get out of it and game devs realizing there's no profit there, right? There's no profit to VR games. Not enough people are buying them to justify their development. There, there's too much of a, of a giant hindrance, a big, big hurdle to entering into that gaming space. Too much equipment cost, too much everything. So why is a game dev going to go crazy making a giant high-quality VR game? Most of the, be the best VR games are just ports of games you could play on a console or a PC right now without VR, right? <clears throat> so I, I feel like VR should be used for other things. I mean it. Like, I think VR could be used for business purposes, for medical purposes. I don't think that it should be gaming, you know? I think it's too much of a gimmick and it's too expensive. In a medical field, who cares if it costs you five, six, seven hundred dollars to get a good VR headset? If you're able to do crazy medical things with it, that's, it's worth the cost. But for a gamer to play a fucking fifty dollar video game, it makes no sense, right? <clears throat> Okay. Well, as much uh, as much as I would like to keep doing Q and A all day, because I would love to, we got to get to Act Two of Baldur's Gate Three, guys. Okay. So what we'll do? Let's adjourn and uh, and get set up and everything. And and John, I'm excited to see what we're gonna do here. I definitely want to switch out Will. I'm tired of him. I want to get Shadowheart in there as a different character and get a little bit of variety to the playthrough. And we'll see what we want to do. All right. Guys, thank you so much. And all I'll say is this. <clears throat> I know there's negative stuff going on right now. Please don't take that as, as uh, you know, doom and gloom. It's not doom and gloom. It's just this another setback along the way. Correct? That's In life, you get a series of setbacks. And what you do is you team up with positive people to get past the setbacks and overcome and push forward positively. I know that's what we're going to do. It's not a situation where this is the end of the world. The sky is falling. You know, it's nothing like that. All right? But... Realistically, yeah, we're going on into challenges because of this nonsense, and we're going to get past them, and that's fine, all right? Do I need your help right now? Yeah, I do, but I know that I'm going to get it because you guys have been with me here for 15 years, right? So I know that we're going to get past this part. We're going to play new games later this week. Things are going to pick up. Things are going to be great. We're going to have an awesome few months coming up with all the new releases and everything we're doing together. we got a fun marathon coming up for the Super Bowl. we got all this stuff going on, this positive stuff. We don't have to freak out about one little bump in the row. It just sucks that I even have to bring it up because it is affecting these streams directly, right? <clears throat> so please, don't take anything here that we talked about today as, oh my God, it's the end. It's not in any way, shape, or form. Exactly, the best days are ahead. I still believe that. I still believe that our best days together are coming, all right? All right, guys, thank you all. Let's uh, adjourn for today. And tomorrow, hopefully, I'll be having some positive words to talk about Act 2 in Baldur's Gate 3, as well as, of course... More Pal World action later tonight, which I hope goes well. So thank you for watching. Please check out DSP Throwback. If you're on DSP Reacts, please give me feedback and keep your eyes and ears open for those changes. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Peace out.